This is the beginning of the fourth season of my food forest. This section here is a little newer than that. The first three seasons, I was very, very concentrated on just expanding, planting as much as possible. This fourth season though, I'm going to improve what I already have. And this row of plantings is one of the things that I'm planning to improve on. So if you're thinking about starting a food forest or maybe you've recently just started one, this is gonna be a good video to watch. You'll be able to see some of the mistakes that I've made and how I'm gonna fix them. Let's go. Did I just chop down a banana tree? Yes, I did. I planted these bananas here for chop and drop. This is a huge amount of chop and drop material that's going to build the soil. These banana plants are dedicated for exactly this task. I've had a three day pause filming this video due to some family in town I've been entertaining, but I thought this was a great opportunity to talk about using bananas as chop and drop. As you can see here, they grow back very fast. In three days, we have close to, close to a foot, nine to 12 inches of growth. This one's a little slower. It's about four inches. And also the, the way that I manage my bananas, as far as what I'm growing for chop and drop and what I grow for a crop is that I transplant the pups. So this is what's called a sword sucker pup. It has thin leaves. There's another type of pup called a water sucker. It has broader, fatter leaves, more like a mature plant. The sword sucker is what you want to use if you're growing a crop, if you want to uh, harvest bananas off of it. They grow a little faster. The water sucker is very, very slow growing. It will produce bananas, but it'll take a lot longer. And the water sucker, if you leave it attached to the mother plant corm, is just going to suck energy from the banana plants. This sword sucker here, I'll dig it up at some point and transplant it back to my banana jungle where it can produce fruit for me. Everywhere else where I have bananas planted, if I get a water sucker pup, I dig that up and plant it somewhere like this row so that I can use it as chop and drop material. I use the less desirable pups as chop and drop material, and I use the good pups, the sword suckers, as a fruit crop. That's how you can manage your bananas for different purposes. I have a row of fruit trees here. Got a little guava, a mulberry, an apricot tree, a raw sapote, and a blackberry jam fruit tree. They're doing okay. The mulberry is producing. The others aren't big enough yet, really. There's just not enough fertility in the soil, and it's my fault. I have some chop and drop material here, but I haven't really been fully utilizing the material that I have. Plus there's not enough for this row. So I'm gonna to have to bring material from the other side. There's invasive rhizomatic grass growing through here that I need to get rid of. There's a lot of ground that isn't covered with ground cover. If I don't plant what I want to grow, then mother nature is gonna fill it in for me. And in this case, it's that invasive grass. So I'm gonna to have to fix that. The main goal here though, is to make a more pronounced row do a massive chop and drop to start really building the soil to what it can be. I've got plants all over the fruit forest that I can transplant into this area. I'll be bringing in loads of ground cover, more chop and drop material, chop and drop plants that are not quite as invasive and intrusive as Mexican sunflower, and last but not least, pollinator attractors. This row is gonna look much different when I'm done and the soil is going to benefit greatly. Now I'll take you over to the other spot where I'm going to harvest a lot of chop and drop material that I'm going to use in this row to build the soil.
Here's a patch of Mexican sunflower. It got away from me a little bit. I would consider this to be intrusive, not necessarily invasive. It's really my fault for not managing it. It's a little bit too close to this Namdak Mai mango tree. I'm sure the roots are competing a little bit. Then if we walk through here, it's probably affecting this hairy mango tree as well, as far as the roots competing. I'm going to thin this out and use the chop and drop material to fix my row on the other side of the food forest. So you may be thinking, is Mexican sunflower invasive or not? The short answer is maybe. It is considered highly invasive by the government of Florida. For a food forest environment, Mexican sunflower is exactly what you want for chop and drop material. It grows fast, you can chop it back, and it'll grow back fairly quickly. It's hard to kill, and it does spread, but it doesn't really spread too fast. Let me show you something. So this patch of Mexican sunflower started out as two sticks. I put one in the ground right here and one in the ground over there. And it did grow pretty fast. It's more of a clumping type growth. And I probably did plant it too close to my mango tree because Mexican sunflower is very good at getting nutrients out of the ground. The only reason this patch got so crazy wild is because Hurricane Ian came along and knocked the plant over. And then when that happened, all of the big stalks that it knocked over rooted and made new plants. That's where this big jungle came from. I have two goals here. One is to harvest this chop and drop material from my row over there that I'm fixing today. Second goal is to make this sunflower jungle less intrusive to my two mango trees that I have planted here. So the first part is going to be chopping. My two favorite tools for chop and drop are these machetes. I'll show you this one first. This one's really good for grabbing a whole bunch of stalks like that. And just cutting them. This machete on the other hand is a powerhouse. This is how I use this machete. You can see how fairly easy it is to chop and drop Mexican sunflower. So I'm going to go ahead and chop and drop this whole jungle. And I'll show you how I'm going to make it less intrusive after that. It took me about two minutes to chop that Mexican sunflower. Easily took me another 10 minutes to make a pile. It helps to have the right tool. And speaking of the right tools, Good machetes are very important in a food forest or a garden. I'll put links to Amazon for both of these machetes in the description and a pinned comment. So the main reason I don't consider this invasive is because it's not really hard to get rid of, even after it's turned into a jungle and rooted all over the place. <laughs> That's all you got to do. So I'm going to take advantage of how easy it is just to pull these out by the roots. And I'm going to transplant them along the fence row over here so that I have a never ending supply of Mexican sunflower. There it is. It's all clear now. I left a row of Mexican sunflower here. It's far enough away from my mango trees. Those ones are still there. This original one, which started from just sticking a cutting right here, was kind of hard to get out. I'll admit to that. So I did have to use a shovel. I have a little bit more to do with this mango tree. It's kind of bent over. I want to straighten that out. And um, this mango tree 
it made quite a few mangoes, but it dropped quite a few before they became ripe. And I think it's because it was in the dry season. It wasn't getting enough water. I think the Mexican sunflower crowding and out was sucking up all the moisture. I'm going to prop this up so that it's a little more vertical and I'll fix this area up a little bit so it holds moisture better. But that's a project for another day. My neighbor recently put in a fence. So a lot of this landscape has now been tore up. It's bared dirt or sand, I should say. So I transplanted those Mexican sunflower plants in a row here. I'll have a lot of chop and drop material from this and these plants won't be crowding out any fruit trees any longer. And right here are the two very large ones that I pulled up that I had to use a shovel for. I didn't get too fancy when transplanting these. I just dug a, a small little hole and plopped the whole bush right down into it. Should be fine because in the rainy season, the way that I propagate this plant is I just take a cutting and stick it in the ground. Nine times out of 10 it grows. Now I need to transplant this Mexican sunflower that I chopped over to the other side of the food forest. And just to make it a little bit easier to fit into the cart, I'm going to use this monster tool and make the pieces a little bit smaller. I was able to fit all of the Mexican sunflower in one load. Hopefully it all stays on the cart on the trip over there. Fantastic. Made it with no problem. All the materials in place. We got some greens, Mexican sunflower there some landscaping material, some browns, palm fronds, some more big palm fronds. Now it's time to start getting busy and laying down this biomass in this row. I'm hitting the home stretch on this project. Just a couple more things to do. The first thing I'm going to do is a little weed whacking just so I can see what's going on a little bit better. So here we go. Always watching for fire ants. I'm going to take my heavy duty machete and cut these banana stalks in half. They'll break down a little quicker. I'll also be able to cover more space. I'm going to use these and some of the larger material here as kind of a, an outline around my plants. I'll chop and drop the Mexican sunflower that I already have here before I add the Mexican sunflower from the other side. And some pigeon pea. And another banana plant. Do a little chop and drop on this here. I can't remember the actual name of this. It's a relative of Cuban oregano, but I have this here because supposedly rodents don't like the smell of this. Although I don't have rats, so I'm not sure. It doesn't work on rabbits, I can tell you that much. Okay, next, I'm going to put down the Mexican sunflower and the banana leaves that I chopped and dropped from this area. Make it thick. Next, I'll start putting down the chop and drop material 
from other places in the food forest and our landscaping. Mexican sunflower. I'm gonna do that first, first layer. Bend it in half so that you can kind of get it close to the root zone. That's the last of the Mexican sunflower. Now this landscaping material. Now the palm fronds in place of cardboard. These are a little bit dangerous. They have a, uh, they're kind of thorny. You definitely want to wear gloves, possibly full body armor. Can be a little dangerous and a little painful. Now I'll compress it a little bit just by walking on it. And being sure not to destroy any of the precious plants. The last part of this step is to rake some of this green material that I weed whacked and some of the mulch up into the center. I highly recommend Bully Tools. Bully Tools, this is the fourth rake that I've had. The first three were Amazon, Walmart specials. And they just don't hold up to this kind of abuse. So whenever I buy a new tool, it's Bully Tools. I also bought a new hoe around the same time. I went through three of those as well. Those cheap tools just don't hold up. Chop and drop step is done. I did another weed whack after I raked. We need to cover this ground with actual plants. So I need to go harvest some plants out of spots where I don't want them to grow. I have five different kinds of plants I'm gonna put in here to hopefully help keep the weeds away. I'll go over each plant as I'm putting it into the ground. This first plant is blue porterweed. It's a Florida native. I literally just pulled it out of the ground. It's going to attract pollinators, plus those little blue flowers are edible. I'm just going to put one in between each fruit tree in this row right here. And while I'm at it, I'll pick out some rhizomes from this grass. You don't have to be too careful with this. It's not like planting a fruit tree, literally just make a little hole and put the plant in there. Not a big deal at all. This next plant I'm gonna put in here is longevity spinach. I'll make a trench, put the rooted cuttings in the trench and put the dirt on top of them. Most of these cuttings have roots in several places already. They're almost guaranteed to live in the summertime when it's raining, you don't even need roots on your cuttings. I had to get the big tool out. It's just a little bit easier to break up the soil. Much easier than the hoe. And then the same way that I made a trench for the longevity spinach, I'll make another trench for this Next crop, the last plants that I have to put in there, a couple of sweet potatoes, and also this African potato mint, which I harvested six, seven months ago, and I just put it in these containers and it sprouted.
African potato minnow is just so easy to propagate. Obviously, you can propagate by these tubers by taking them out of the ground and basically doing nothing. So for these African potato mint, they're so easy to grow. Really all I'm gonna do is start dumping them out. I'm gonna dump them out, dump them out and then come back and arrange them a little bit. Hopefully this African potato mint will make a nice ground cover border. And keep some of the rhizome grass away. Here's a big cluster. I'll just throw it around a little bit. That's an amazing plant. Make a hole with my foot. Throw a potato down there. Throw another one and a cutting. So I could have uh, maybe taken my time a little bit more, especially for the longevity spinach. But this is kind of a gorilla gardening tactic because I know that longevity spinach is going to have no problem taking root. The African potato mint is going to have no issues growing in the soil. It was just waiting for a little bit of soil to really get going. One plant that I almost forgot about is this vetiver grass. This is a great grass. The roots will go down about 10 to 12 feet and suck up all the nutrients from deep, deep below the ground. Then I can use it as chop and drop. It'll grow back really fast. I'll plant this vetiver grass in between each one of the blue porter weed plants that I put in there. It started raining before I could finish filming. Put a thin layer of mulch down in the rain to help the longevity spinach and the African potato mint not dry out so much. The timing of the rain was perfect. Very, very happy about that. Thank you, Mother Nature. Look at that well-defined row with all that biomass. Feed the soil. The soil feeds the fruit trees. The fruit trees will feed me. The blue porter weed's looking a little rough, but just needs to get acclimated. Can't really see the ground cover yet. Longevity spinach in the African potato mint. They'll start poking through the mulch soon. Got some vetiver grass doing its thing. And that banana plant is growing back so fast, it already has a leaf. Fantastic. I'm very happy with this project. Well, that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like if you did. Subscribe for more videos like this. Maybe a follow-up video once the ground cover starts poking through. I'll put a list of all the tools that I used in this video in both the description and the pinned comment. Once again, thanks for watching. I appreciate you.